my name is Hilary Kearney and I'm the author of Queen Spotting. My business, Girl Next Door Honey, is in San Diego, California. Today we are going to talk about foundationless beekeeping and the most important thing about foundationless beekeeping is having a good comb guide. So here we've got some empty frames and before you get started you always want to make sure you have a comb guide in here. So this one's got no comb guide and you can see there's a groove right here along the top bar. That's where your comb guide's gonna go. This one does have a comb guide. In my opinion, this comb guide's too short. I'd really like to see double or triple the length on this. And I like to use paint sticks. So what I usually do is I get a, a big box of painter sticks. Uh, and that's like what you use to stir your uh, cans of paint. And I paint them with, with beeswax. And then I nail them into the top of my guide. You can also use glue or some people try to use beeswax, but once the bees start building on them, it's gonna have a lot of weight. And so sometimes they can actually fall out. So that's why I like to take just little tiny nails and just hammer them in, uh, one here, one here. If you're doing foundationless, the most useful place to do it is actually in the brood nest. Bees build really orderly in the brood nest. That's where they're gonna build the straightest. And that's where you're gonna have the biggest benefit because allowing the bees to have natural comb in the brood nest is the most beneficial to their health. So this is where all the larva is being raised. And when you let them build their own comb, their cell size is naturally smaller than what you would see in, in a foundation. So smaller cell size means smaller, more naturally sized bees. So if you're starting with all foundationless, you just want to watch their, their progress closely to make sure that they're building straight. Because once you get one comb that's off, the rest of the combs will start to be off too. And you can see this is a natural foundation piece because it's got this kind of wave in it. And it's not attached at the bottom or on the sides. And that's normal for a foundationless frame. And as long as you can pull it up and down and it stays pretty well within the frames, uh, you're not having a problem. So having a little bit of natural wave, a few curves, that's all good. So what can start to happen is if you have one comb that becomes a little too wavy or worst case scenario, it crosses over to the next frame. Sometimes you get pieces of comb that cross across all the frames. Now you're not able to pull up the frames easily and you're gonna be breaking comb every time you do. So that's why you have the comb guides in there to keep them building straight. If you think about the bees and what they like to do is they like to build really efficiently. So when you have a nice comb guide hanging down here, the most efficient thing to do is actually to follow along that guide. If you get any cross comb and you catch it early, it's actually pretty easy to fix because you can just gently push it with your hand back in place. And sometimes you might need a rubber band to hold it straight in the frame. But if you let it go too long, you'll just get more and more crooked comb. So these pieces are actually built out very straight and nice, and that's exactly what we want to see. And once you've got some straight pieces like this, if you have an empty frame, you can even uh, put it between these two straight pieces to ensure you get a nice straight frame. As we get deeper into this hive, they're starting to make more honeycomb on this end, and I can see that it's actually kind of getting bubbly over here, which isn't necessarily a problem, but it can be a little bit more difficult to inspect. So I'm just going to pull up these two frames together. These are empty right now, but they're a little on the bubbly side. And when they're full of honey, they might be a little bit difficult to work with. You can see they've created a lot of little bridge pieces between these two. And as long as you start on the end that's skinnier and, and more straight, you can work your way over to these, these sides, just like I did. And you can actually get away with having a little bit of funkiness in your hive, as long as you have some really straight frames to get out of the hive first to give yourself room, this isn't gonna be a problem. But actually, this is a really excellent frame to illustrate why foundationless beekeeping is so different because you can actually see two different kinds of cell sizes on here. So on this side, we've got worker size cells 
and they're much smaller. And on this side, we've got drone sized cells and they're way bigger. And so bees actually naturally make two different distinct sizes with their cells. And each colony is gonna make a different size cell based on their own physiology. So each bee family or bee colony is got a different body size. And so each colony of bees can sometimes have different you know, sizes, smaller bees or bigger bees. And it's very slight and to humans, we might not even notice it. So like certain breeds of bees too, tend to be on the smaller side or on the bigger side. And they're all building their comb which they raise their young in, in accordance to that body size. When you give them foundation, you're giving them just a one size fits all cell. And not only is that impacting their, their natural body size, but it's preventing them from making proper drone cells for their colony. So that's really obvious right here. So you can see the workers on this side, drones on this side. When you use foundation, the cells are too big for workers and they're too small for drones. So you're suppressing them from making drones and then you're, you're forcing them to make these kind of extra large worker bees because when a larva grows in those extra large cells, it's gonna grow to the size of the cell. So actually there's been some studies that show that the bees are, are actually bigger than they naturally would be. And some people are concerned that this is connected with some greater health problems like um, mites and making them more susceptible to different parasites. So yeah, so when you're using a colony that has all foundation, they're not able to make drones. And drones are very important to the health of the colony. Um, and there's still a lot we don't understand about drones. And I'm a believer in letting the bees do what they think is best and trying to stick to as close as how they would naturally live as possible. So when you use foundation, you're suppressing their ability to make drones and you're repressing that population. So not only are you affecting your own colony, the colony that is making the drones, but these drones are interacting with colonies for miles around. And so when you're reducing the amount of drones in your colony, you're reducing the population of drones in your area. And that's having an effect on mating quality of queens all over. And so if you've got really nice, uh, healthy, docile bees, you should want your drones to go out into the world and contribute to the greater bee population. We want them to spread those genes. We want our bees to have enough drones to mate with. And some people will look at this area, this drone comb area, and they'll say, oh, that's gonna be all drones. I wanna take that out of my hive. But actually what's gonna happen is once they've hatched through some drones, they'll turn this into honey. And you actually get more honey in these foundationless frames because they're able to hold more in these extra large drone cells. And they tend to make them quite fat. So I really love these foundationless honey frames because I find that they're much heavier and able to store a lot more honey than when I'm using foundation. Okay, so another thing about foundationless beekeeping, and this can scare some people off uh, trying it, is that you have to be very careful about how you handle your frames. So if you notice on this frame, we're only attached right here, along the top, and then right here. And especially when they first started building on, on a frame like this, they won't even be attached to the sides because they're gonna start in the middle and it'll just be a, a very delicate hanging piece of comb. And especially when you have new comb and it's very white, um, it's soft and it's new and it, and it can be damaged really easily. It can actually break out of the frame. So when I'm holding my frames, I just like to hang it from my fingers and be very loose with it. Um, I don't wanna ever grip it like this and kind of manipulate it forcefully. Um, I'm, I'm very loose in letting it hang. And if I need to turn it, I can do this. I just put one corner down and I turn it. Another way of doing it is putting it against your chest like this. So check to make sure there's no bees here. And then just change sides like this. Uh, the instinct is to flip it like this, to flip it. And that's the incorrect instinct because when you start to flip it like this, you're putting too much pressure on the comb. This comb is very old and stiff and there's nothing in it right now. Uh, so we can get away with doing this to show you. But if this was full of honey and if it was soft new comb, that, and especially if it was a warm day, that would easily break. So you're kind of just thinking of it as working with gravity. And when you let it hang from your fingers like that, you're naturally working with gravity versus once you start to grip it, now you have the ability to manipulate it against gravity. Another thing is when you're looking at the frame, it's okay to tip it a little bit like this, 
but once again, I would never want to tip it like this. So I rather think of moving my arms and the angle of the comb versus manipulating the comb itself like this. Another benefit of foundationless beekeeping is you're not introducing anything from any other beekeepers. So when you use foundation, uh, it's being made from wax, usually from large scale commercial beekeepers. And that wax can be contaminated with pesticides and then you're bringing those into your colony, your brand new colony. So it's nice to go foundationless because you know you're starting out with a nice clean wax and it's much more hygienic than working with foundation where you don't know the actual source of that wax or what's actually in it. This is especially important if you plan to eat comb honey. So if you're one of those people who likes to just take a big chunk of honeycomb and eat it that way, um, you obviously wouldn't want a bunch of pesticides in that comb. So especially in the honey supers, if you plan on having honeycomb, uh, you would be a good idea to go foundationless. So the last thing about uh, foundationless beekeeping is harvesting the honey. This box right here is our brood box. So usually the first box that you have is dedicated to brood. And even if you see some honey in there, that's not honey you would want to extract. It's usually honey you would leave for the bees. But you should be harvesting from the upper boxes. Um, you always want to make sure you leave some honey for your bees. You don't want to take too much or take it too early or at the wrong time of year. So make sure you have a good understanding of the honey extracting process before you go ahead and take honey. So some beekeepers will tell you that you can not harvest honey uh, in the traditional way, which is extraction where you're spinning the honey out. They'll say you cannot do that in foundationless frames, but that's actually not true. Uh, you just have to take a little bit more care with how you extract. So I've even extracted with uh, deep sized frames like these ones and not damaged it. The main worry is that because you're dealing with these combs that aren't all attached to the sides or because they're not reinforced with foundation, that they're gonna blow out or break during the extraction process. But if you're really worried about that, there's little holes in the sides of your frames and these are for wires. So you can pre-wire any frames that you plan on extracting to strengthen them. Um, you can also just go much more slowly. So when you're spinning out your, your honey, you spin it out really slowly at first to get some of that honey weight out. And then uh, you can go a little bit faster to get the remainder out. I mostly work with medium sized frames, so they're a little shorter than this, and those do better in the extractor as well. But um, I have successfully extracted with deep frames. And of course, if you've got a flow hive, you don't have to worry about doing extraction, um, but you can see how beneficial it is to have foundationless uh, comb in the brood nest, and then allowing them to have that natural comb below, and then having the flow frames above for just honey.